when we look at MLT, it's very similar to SLT in the wavelength. So using a 532, you can use the 577 for MLTs also. Um, it causes minimal to no damage to the tissue. It targets that intracellular melanin and activates those macrophages to allow the facilitation of outflow through the trabecular meshwork. It uses slightly a smaller spot size. We use a 300 micron spot size. So if you have a little bit narrow of an angle, you can probably squeeze it in a little bit easier than the 400 micron spot size. We really don't see any post-op inflammation. I wrote minimal. I really don't see any post-op inflammation. So we don't use any pre-op or post-op or medications in these patients afterwards. The laser is repeatable. Um, and also, once again, we have multiple uses of this laser. So this, so this is a nice slide. slide. I always like to show this slide, slide because this is kind of showing you what's going on in the trabecular meshwork. So, so with a 50 micron spot size, 100 millisecond duration, and 1,000 milliwatts of power, you can actually see on this e &M slide of the trabecular meshwork the actual burn that takes place from a traditional ALT procedure. If you look at the micropulse treated eye, you don't see any changes within the trabecular meshwork, and that's using a 300 micron spot size, 300 millisecond, 1,000 milliwatts of power with a 15% duty cycle. So you compare that MLT eye to that of the control eye, really no difference at all. So that shows you that we can still get the effect without causing the tissue damage, which then allows us to make this uh, procedure repeatable in the future if needed. This is uh, courtesy of Ike Ahmed. Uh, this is just showing you what it would look like as a treating physician. Uh, what you're basically doing is taking a 300 micron spot size and laying those 300 micron spots right next to each other across 360 degrees of the trabecular meshwork. With the laser itself, you probably will be putting in somewhere between 95 to 120 spots, basically about 10 spots per clock hour. Uh, the nice thing is Iridex actually has worked on making a lens that has a little clicking device on it which actually rotates each clock hour. So you can say, okay, I need to put 10 spots here, click, I need to put 10 spots here, click, 10 spots here. And so by the time you go around 360 degrees, you've, you've made your treatment and you've known how many spots uh, to put in. So what I wanted to do is just show some of the data from my earlier work. I started off first using 300 milliwatts, and the question was why? No one knew what power settings to use. So we were kind of being the, the principal investigators in this, and so at first I started off with 300 milliwatts of power, and, and basically I looked at patients at a four-month period, and at that time we saw about an 18% reduction in power, I'm not in power, in, in pressure. We then said, well, that's pretty good. Let's move up the power setting a little bit. Let's go up to 700 milliwatts. And then we looked at them at one month and four months. And what we saw is that at one month is about equal to that at four months at 300 milliwatts. But by four months, the pressure went down a little bit further, down to about 22% uh, reduction in pressure. We then decided to move up to 1,000 milliwatts. And why did I, I kind of choose 1,000 milliwatts? Well, if you go back to that histopathological slide earlier, with that E&M scope, we know that 1,000 milliwatts is not going to cause any destruction to the tissue. So I felt very comfortable at that point using 1,000 milliwatts. And what we see is that nice dose response curve in that at one month we saw about a 22% reduction. By four months, a really nice reduction, about 30%. And then by 12 months, a little fall off or a 26% reduction in, in IOP. This is now my two-year data that I'm presenting uh, today, and if we look at it, we do see a little bit drop off further, down to a 24% reduction, but still a nice effect by two years out uh, with the MLT procedure. Uh, there was two eyes that had no effect at all, and if we were to take those patients out of the study, um, we'd have about a 28% reduction at two years. So for those that did respond, we saw an average of 28% reduction. For all comers, we only saw about a 24% reduction, but still a nice effect uh, from treatment. 